Level 1 Computex 2019 coverage is made possible by ASRock. Yes, ASRock has sponsored our travel to come out to Computex. So I want to say thanks to ASRock. They've got a lot of new exciting products here at Computex. Not the least of which is X570. All of their X570 motherboards in the full lineup. We're going to have a video on that. You should check that out. There's a link in the description. Definitely check out their products. They've also got the uh, Steel Legend, the Z390. So, you know, if you're Team Red or Team Blue, it doesn't really matter. There's something there for you no matter no matter what although you know things are getting kind of interesting at this computex also I want to say a big thanks to team group team group they've got a lot of new exciting ssds and ram and all kinds of stuff and they also sponsored our travel out to computex so all of our computex coverage for 2019 are thanks to those guys because you know they they made it so we could get here which is really awesome now team group is uh it's pretty exciting we've got a full video of all the stuff that they've got going on at their booth i've been using team group for many many years all the way back to like i think the ddr2 or ddr3 days check them out there's a link in the description so computex is wrapping up and let's face it you don't really watch this channel to find the uh seventh report on what corsair is doing with custom loop water cooling or any of the other stuff. I mean, I like to do that because it's fun, and we're gonna do that now because there's some cool stuff I saw at the ASRock booth. So I'll use ASRock to introduce the X570 stuff, but it's really AMD. <laughs> Isn't everything always about AMD? It's like that plucky little startup that could. Uh, Robert Hallett calls it <laughs> the world's biggest startup company. He says that's what it feels like sometimes. And I would believe it. I mean, sort of doing everything by the seat of their pants, but still back on the Fortune 500. <sighs> There's a lot of really exciting things that I saw at Computex. And, uh, okay, I mean, it's fine. We're gonna talk about AMD stuff. We can, we, we totally can. AMD absolutely dominated this Computex. They killed it. They just, I mean, the keynote and everybody else running around and, I mean, to be clear, Intel actually did have some cool stuff to show off. I mean, their new 10 nanometer CPUs, the 18% IPC uplift, that's pretty cool. And, I, I mean, it's not, Intel really didn't do a bad job this Computex, but everybody's really excited about AMD. I mean, it, it's the, the feeling in the air is electric. Now, ASRock actually had a lineup of 10, yeah, 10 new X570 boards. What does that tell you about how much OEMs like ASRock believe in the upcoming CPUs? I mean, they've got the engineering samples, presumably and have seen them and there's 10 boards from ASRock at the booth. But before we talk about X570 and all the cool stuff I saw at the ASRock booth like Thunderbolt on X570, I did it first on Threadripper and now it's coming to mainstream motherboards on X5. Thunderbolt on AM4? Yes. On more than one board too. We'll get to that. We're going to talk about that. We need to we need to talk first though because I've had a chance to sort of collect my thoughts on this. And you know, at the press events AMD really wasn't talking specifics. They introduced Rome, and they were like, eh, we'll find out more about Rome later. We're working on Rome, Rome's cool. They did accidentally, I think more or less inadvertently, well, I've got some speculation about Rome, let's say, uh, but uh, we'll get to that in a minute. AMD also wasn't really talking things like overclocking and precision boost overdrive and what sort of headroom we can expect, but the IPC uplift and the all-core performance advantage that they demonstrated on stage, pretty strong. And they showed off Navi. Now, a lot of partners like ASRock actually had some killer stuff on the show floor. And the demos shown by AMD with, with all of the performance increases are, you know, no doubt their best case scenarios. So don't overhype it. Don't, don't, you know, you gotta take it with a little bit of a grain of salt because AMD is gonna show their platform in the best possible light. So, the best possible applications for using it. That said, do I think they've got a winner on their hands? I do, I really do. Now, I did actually get to put my hands on Rome. Yes, Rome, the Rome. Uh, that's about all I'm gonna say about that because, uh, yeah, I mean, I got to play with it in the context of more than just the uh, AMD protein folding workload and that's all I'm gonna say for now. And Intel immediately was like, well, no, if you if you put those against, you know, your new CPUs against our new CPUs, our new CPUs would win. But then the winning documentation from, from Intel showed them only winning by a small margin. And yeah, it's less cores, AMD has more cores, 
but Intel also didn't disclose if they were using any of the Spectre and Meltdown mitigations, so felt a little bit like, oh yeah, well we're still relevant, it's fine. I'm reminded of a Robert Noyce quote, and that is, innovation is everything. When you're at the forefront, you can see what the next step is. And when you're not, you have to spend all of your energy catching up. And that's really, that's a really good way to summarize this entire Computex. So you also gotta read the room. I mean, the feeling from vendors really was just completely electric. When Zen 1 launched, there was a lot of hope in the air. But with the, uh, you know, we're on sort of the precipice of the Zen 2 launch, and billion dollar companies are beyond excited about Zen 2. I'm cautiously optimistic. I have uh, been fooled by the hype train one too many times, but it does look really, really pretty interesting. Now the 3700X is priced at 329 and it has a 65 watt TDP. So this is what I'm thinking of when I'm thinking Rome. And so 65 watts, eight cores, 16 threads, you know, 120 watts at those same clock speeds or clocked lower, you, you know, they got the 12 core part. Do a little bit of extrapolation there from the AMD press event. And if AMD is able to basically get that same kind of a performance from a Rome type chip with those chiplets, then the server market is in for quite a shakeup. I'm not saying that's what I put my hands on. I'm just saying that if that were the case, that would be neat. Now there were a lot of huge OEMs here spending a lot of money on servers and you have to I mean these are ten thousand dollar CPUs at the top end from the Intel side so that are, that's the kind of dollar amounts that we're dealing with it is a non-trivial amount of money these companies don't invest in AMD's platform on just hope they're they're betting on a sure it's like you know people at the horse race not really but it's like it's a sure thing it can't not be awesome and so the number of SKUs that we're going to see from Dell and HP and all the other companies, I mean, it really says something about a product. You have to look at it from that perspective. Forget the desktop market. Forget all the server stuff. Look at all the enterprises that are adopting everything and then kind of extrapolate that from all of that money being spent to the desktop because most of the money that you make on the desktop is from very large companies buying the cheapest computers they can for their workforce. Not the cheapest computers ever, but the cheapest computers that actually will work for their workforce. And then the desktop users are, are kind of second banana. But it looks like AMD can lock up the desktop performance market because I think Intel is less behind on the server side than people realize. Uh, but on the desktop side, it sure does look like there's some problems. Now let's go back to the show floor for my impressions from the show floor. There's a lot happening with X570. A lot. Everybody's got to have chipset cooling except for the Aqua. What do you got? PCI Express 4.0. <laughs> the whole world changes. Things that were not possible before are now possible. One of those things, ASRock has got Thunderbolt on board on X570. Yes. We've got that on the ITX motherboard, which has some other cool stuff I'll talk about in a minute. We've also got that on ATX. We've even got 10 gig LAN on the Creator Edition. So there's 10 different lineups for X570. 10. We've got 10 phase to 14 phase VRM across the board. We've got USB-C. There's tons of 10 gigabit connectivity from the uh, the AMD chipset. So I mean that's pretty cool. But yeah, Thunderbolt. They've also got the Thunderbolt external GPU. So if you've got one of the older devices or one of the older you know Intel ITX motherboards with Thunderbolt, and you don't have any way of adding graphics, or maybe you've got a Mac and you want to add Thunderbolt graphics. Well, they've got the uh, RX 570. That's Thunderbolt, it's a direct interface, but Thunderbolt on X570 is a big deal. It's really exciting. The motherboards also have internal uh, DisplayPort headers so that you can use their graphics card that have an internal DisplayPort connection and actually route that through the Thunderbolt connection internally without having any external cables, which as far as I know is also unique. The X570 Aqua, it's liquid cooling. It's liquid cooling for the VRMs, top, end, VRM, 14 phase, VRM, cooling for the liquid part of that. You get liquid X570, the aim for cooling of the CPU. But then you've also got liquid cooling of the chipset. It's the only X570 motherboard I've seen that does not have a fan for that PCI Express 4.0 chipset, which you know is upwards of like 15 watts. So the full lineup on X570 is we get the Phantom Gaming X, that's the higher end Phantom Gaming, higher end VRMs, cool options there. With the X570 Phantom Gaming 4, the X570 Phantom Gaming ITX with Thunderbolt 3, 
the X570 Stream 4, the X570 Steel Legend, the X570 Aqua, the X570 Creator, and then we got the X570 Pro 4 and the X570M Pro 4. So mini or micro ATX and full size ATX. We've also got the X570 Tai Chi, which is quite an upgrade over the previous Tai Chi motherboards. So with Ryzen 3000 plus X570, you've got 20 usable PCI Express lanes plus 16 PCI Express 4.0 lanes from the chipset. So just to be clear, you've got your Ryzen 3000 CPU with 24 PCI Express lanes. Four go to the chipset, four go to NVMe for storage, and 16 go to the primary graphics slot or by 8x8 in that configuration. Now the IO die is the chipset, basically, sort of, kind of. The whole point of the Southbridge is basically to just get that USB or SATA or whatever the board partner elects to use to get that physical interface basically just onto the PCI Express bus. That's it. That's all, that's all it does. It does require active cooling and we'll talk about that in a second, but uh, you've got 16 PCI Express 4.0 lanes that are available for various peripherals at the Southbridge. So with the chipset situation, you've got a PCI Express 4.0 by 4 interface from the CPU to the chipset, and then the chipset has 16 PCI Express 4.0 lanes. It's actually a pretty good situation because most downstream devices are not actually going to be PCI Express 4.0. It is effectively like having PCI Express 3.0 by 8 between the CPU and the chipset. So you could run two old-style NVMe, like PCI Express 3.0 NVMe off the chipset and no bottleneck or getting to be like that's right at the edge. Um, so you could have a three NVMe setup in RAID, like RAID 0 or RAID 1 or something like that. But I think for desktop systems, the most you'd want to go is a two drive RAID, like a RAID 1 for redundancy and you'll get a read speed boost or RAID 0, which will give you both a read and a write speed boost. That's a pretty cool use for an AM4 workstation. 12 cores, I've done the math, I've done the homework, don't think that's going to be a memory bottleneck in most scenarios. There were a lot of really interesting things on the show floor with regard to memory frequency. Not going to say anything about that because nothing's finalized. There's no official word. It's all wait till E3, as I've said repeatedly. So again, hype train and all that. But there were some interesting things on the show floor, so I'm just going to have to wait. Now the Thunderbolt support on those AMD ASRock motherboards. That's a first. That's a really big deal because of peripheral interconnectivity. But PCI Express 4.0 also opens up the possibility of OcuLink, I think is how that's pronounced, or OCU Link. Kind of thing. The thing you have to understand is PCI Express 4.0 is just a bus, and you can deposit anything you want on the bus. And as long as you have something on the other end that can deposit what you deposit on the bus, then it doesn't really matter. Now, while I'm on Thunderbolt, ASRock also had an X570 low power all in one. ITX PCB uh, that is a Thunderbolt eGPU. So it's not like an enclosure that has a regular GPU in it. It was the whole thing, basically an ITX motherboard size thing. Imagine that's gonna work really well with Apple, but you could use it with an ultra compact uh, AM4 solution with Thunderbolt. They also had one bolted to the back of a display. So that seemed like a pretty cool use case because you could have your laptop and then just plug that in and it's all in one. And when you're plugged into your external mo external monitor, you also get reasonable external graphics in RX 570. And combining it all is a, is a way of reducing the cost. Some of those eGPU enclosures can get pretty expensive, but overall it's pretty awesome. Now besides Thunderbolt, you know what else is really interesting about the Phantom Gaming ITX? Intel style mounting holes, yeah. So it turns out the AM4 mounting scheme really takes up a lot of board real estate and to make the ITX motherboard as small as possible, ASRock figured out a way to have Intel style mounting holes on that motherboard. They say it works fine. Intel CPUs and AMD CPUs are different heights, so time will tell how that will actually work. Oh, well, the, the ITX board is also not the only board from ASRock that has Thunderbolt. They had an ATX version of the same motherboard as well. Also has Thunderbolt right on board. Look, that PCI Express 4.0 that you get from the Ryzen chipset, it's really kind of insane. I mean, it's 16 giga transfers uh, frequency on the serial. So the speed of light, the speed of light is the fastest thing that there is. It is insanely fast. In one 16 billionth of a second, do you know how far light can travel? About that far. So on these longer links, there's gonna be multiple bits on the wire. And that's one of the reasons that these motherboards are gonna be uh, as expensive they are. I mean, these, these you know, ultra high-end PCBs are requiring
required to make sure that the signals on the wire stay within very, very tight envelopes. You also hear new terms uh, with regard to the componentry on the motherboard. PCI redrivers or retimers because there's just too much noise and crosstalk through the PCB. So basically these ICs will pick up the serial PCI Express signal and then redeposit them on the wire with new signal to noise ratio characteristics, which is what's necessary for PCI Express 4.0 because it's so insanely fast. So I did ask the question about how does it affect the CPU having the internal fabric being PCI Express 4.0? And again, smiles and nods and wait to E3. So I guess I'm going to E3. Thanks, patrons. I should also mention the X570 Creator. 10 gig ethernet, it's designed for creators. Looks like that's gonna be sort of a quasi workstation. Maybe the 12 core would be a good pairing for that. I mean, heck, the eight core, the, the clock speed. Or an as yet unannounced, unofficial 16 core, which is purely speculation and totally wasn't also on the floor. I mean, Azeroth really had a lot of stuff on the floor they probably shouldn't have. Well, how long are you gonna have to wait to partake of the, you know, to drink from the fountain of seven nanometer? July 7th. So, 7-7-2019. Seven, seven, it's a little more than a month away. It's not super long. You know, it's also July 7th for Navi, too. I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty exciting. You know, it brings me back to another Robert Noyce quote. Don't be encumbered by history. Go and do something wonderful. And AMD really has. Regardless of... Regardless of whether they're the absolute leader in performance or a close second or a medium distance second or a dead heat or slightly better or trading blows or they are for a month and then something changes it doesn't matter they've changed the game prices will be adjusted because of this adjusted down it's good for the consumer AMD was not encumbered by history they did go out and they did do something wonderful Everybody is really optimistic about AMD's future. I'm Wendell, this is level one. Hopefully I haven't rambled too long. Computex 2019 was pretty interesting. Got some more coverage coming for you from stuff that I saw on the show floor, vendor stuff, you know. Appreciate it if you guys watch it, click through, comment, whatever. I mean, I know it's a lot of the same coverage, but I really do enjoy Computex, and I do enjoy sort of covering stuff, and I enjoy being able to chat with you guys about this kind of stuff. I'd love to be walking around, but it's not really a walking around kind of a day. So, I'm Wendell, this is Level 1, and I'll see you later.